Listen, I'm not the first to say this, but Biden's debate performance on Thursday evening was truly disastrous. And it really felt like the culmination of years of concerns about his mental fitness. And for anyone that was still questioning whether or not he was fit to keep serving as president, they got their answer on Thursday evening. It was an unequivocal no. Now, I already shared most of my thoughts about this on last Thursday's episode of The Leftist Mafia, so I'm not going to rehash what I already said, but for those who didn't see that, I was stunned, just like everyone else. Days later, I'm still in disbelief at how bad that debate performance was. With that being said, there is still a small window available to replace him and salvage this election and save democracy. The problem is is that that's easier said than done because he already clinched the nomination. So it's kind of a done deal unless he chooses to unilaterally release his delegates, which he can do, but won't. Now, look, I've seen two family members in the past five years succumb to dementia. They have good days and they have bad days. But there's always this moment where the family has a conversation with them about their capabilities. And it's a difficult conversation. You have to talk about whether or not they can still drive and you have to say you can't they're in denial they don't want to admit that but you have to have this difficult conversation for their own safety now finally enough democrats are having that conversation with themselves and they're saying we should do that with biden now i'm not trying to diagnose biden with dementia or anything like that i don't know what the issue is i mean with old age you never know there's a number of issues i'm assuming but I no longer have the confidence that he's mentally fit to be president, and a lot of people don't have the confidence anymore. Now, that alone, to me, isn't the biggest problem. I think that if Biden were to be president, he would have enough advisors around him to help him do the job. The question now is whether or not America feels the same way. Is this a big enough political liability? And I think the answer is is an obvious yes. Not to mention, there's a devastating new poll released by CBS that finds that 72% of registered voters don't think Biden has the cognitive health to serve as president. Also, 72% don't think he should be running for president. We're talking about the overwhelming majority of Americans here. Now, even among Democrats, 46% don't think that he should be running for president. This is the president's own party, and they're saying, he shouldn't be running. Now, to be fair, the numbers aren't great for Trump either, but they're especially bad for Biden. Furthermore, aggregate polling data shows that he's down nationally in every single recent poll, with the exception of a Fox News poll, ironically. But when it comes to battleground states, he's losing to Trump in all of them, with the exception of Wisconsin, where he's tied. So the question is, what the fuck are we doing here? We are staring down the barrel of a gun named Donald Trump and that fascist is very much the favorite to win this election. So in the name of protecting American democracy, it's not even a question to me. Joe Biden has got to go. He has to be replaced. Rolling with Biden at this point is utterly reckless, in my opinion. We are sailing straight into a fucking iceberg. And we all have to ask ourselves, do we care more about sinking or Biden's ego? Because for me, I care more about sinking. I, I mean, maybe, maybe... Most people don't view it that way. Maybe they think, no, I love Biden. I'm a Democratic Party enthusiast, and I'm going to go with whoever's at the top of the ticket. Let's ask ourselves, do we actually care about defeating Donald Trump? Because if the answer is yes, then I don't know how you can convince yourself that rolling with Biden is the best bet for democracy. And really, Obama, I've got to, I've got to spotlight him. He got us into this mess in a way because he called all the other Democrats in 2020 and told them to drop out and endorse Biden so that way Bernie Sanders wouldn't win. And now he needs to make another phone call. He needs to pick up the phone, call up Biden, and tell him to drop out. Otherwise, it just feels like we're cooked. Like, it's not a foregone conclusion. Biden can still win. But it just feels like we're really gambling with so much. The stakes are so high. And to lose would be unthinkable at this point. Trump is a legitimate threat to democracy, so I just can't imagine why anyone would want to risk it and go with Biden. But let's be real. The prospect of him being replaced is very low. It's very, very low. So the conversation originally, after the debate, went from, you know, how can we convince him to drop out to how do we get people to shut the fuck up who are concerned about him and want him to drop out. That's kind of the shift that we're already seeing. But I do want to play a really quick clip from MSNBC that gives us a summary of the current predicament that we're all in. I, 
I have spoken to some top Democrats who say that there would actually be relief if he were to step down. And one person said to me, look, everyone's counting out Kamala Harris because right now her poll numbers are below President Biden's. But if she were to be the one to carry this torch into November, there could be a method of reintroducing her to the country that could be effective with independents, with moderates, with those critical suburban women that are necessary for winning the White House. We'll have to see how it plays out, though, because publicly speaking, the president, his family, his top aides defiant that he's not going anywhere. So top Democrats and virtually any Democrat not directly related to or working for Biden thinks that he should step down and would even feel relieved if he did. The problem is they don't want to put their necks on the line and say that publicly. They want to whisper about it anonymously to journalists. But I mean, if you're not willing to put your name on it and say it with your full chest, he's not going to do it unless all elected Democrats or most come out with this massive pressure campaign and publicly call on him to drop out. He's not going to drop out. I mean, even then he might not drop out, but you can't just, you know, whisper about it and expect that to make a difference. The anonymity is working to his benefit. Now, what makes matters worse is that his family, they're not helping. They had a private conversation with him at Camp David, and not only did they not encourage him to drop out, they blamed everyone else for his debate performance. Now, it's less about the debate performance and more about like his state, but nonetheless, here's what they say. Politico reports, quote, that First Lady Jill Biden and his son Hunter Biden were the loudest voices urging the president to stay in the 2024 contest. On top of that, members of Joe Biden's family privately trashed his top campaign advisors at Camp David this weekend, blaming them for the president's flop in Thursday's debate and urging Biden to fire or demote people in his political high command. Jesus Christ. The blame was cast widely on staffers, including Anita Dunn, the senior advisor who frequently has the president's ear, her husband, Bob Bauer, the president's attorney who played Trump in rehearsals at Camp David, and Ron Klain, the former chief of staff who ran point on the debate prep and previous cycle sessions. Wow. So to be clear, these are the most selfish people on the planet. Hunter Biden, I think that with him, of course, he's going to encourage his dad to stay in the race because in the off chance he wins, he wants daddy to commute his sentence. So that makes sense to me. As for Jill Biden, you know, you can say, oh, she's just being cruel and she's propping him up for power. But I actually think it's much more simple than that. I think that she's just in denial. I don't think she wants to admit that her husband is as bad as we all see. Right. It's difficult for family to come to terms with the fact that somebody you love is sundowning. But regardless if she sees it or not, it's not good. It's not good. And we only saw a taste of how bad it is because, as Axios reports, Biden's limitations are much more obvious to those who work with him. So he is dependably engaged from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But outside of that range, he's much more likely to mistalk and become fatigued. Yeah, see, this doesn't necessarily scream confidence to me. And the problem is that most Americans, I'm assuming, want a president that's ready to handle a crisis at all times should one emerge. Now, cards on the table, I would much prefer an incoherent Biden to a coherent Trump, because at least with Biden, he has aides to help him make a particular decision. Whereas with Donald Trump, you don't know what the fuck he's going to do. You know, he's just an agent of chaos. The problem is that I don't think most Americans think about this the way that we think about this, right? I think that they acknowledge that Trump is belligerent and he's a threat to democracy, but that's not going to be at the forefront of their minds. Perhaps they think, yeah, he's a threat to democracy, but I think it's more devastating if we have a president that's not ready to handle an emergency. So I don't know how the average person is going to interpret this, but at least based on that CBS News poll, seems like they're worried, right? Now, the prospect of Biden dropping out is inconceivable. He's not going to drop out. And I say this because when you accumulate that much power, you don't give up that much power, right? So the question is, if he's not going to drop out, what the fuck are they going to do? How are they going to get all of us to unsee what we saw on Thursday evening? That's really the question. You know, are they going to invent those little pens from Men in Black where they erase our memories? Uh, Are they going to prop up his corpse like we get at Bernie's? How can you possibly continue this charade at that point? How do you you go forward? Well, they are going forward. They have a couple of strategies. Attack, gaslight, and solidify his nomination so that way we have no choice but to roll with Biden. So let's talk about the first strategy, attack. 
So immediately his campaign went on the defensive and started attacking people who are questioning his mental fitness, the people who put their names to their concerns, right? So the Pod Save America guys, I give them credit where it's due. You know, they're typically Democratic Party hacks, they're Obama era alum, but they were actually honest about Biden and that's really important. Now, I do find it interesting that they condescendingly told Morning Joe last week that young people weren't supporting Biden because they weren't engaged, which kind of means they're ignorant. But, you know, now they're saying, oh, yeah, actually, you know, we should probably replace him. So that to me is really interesting because leftists were saying this and, you know, you were saying that they were ignorant. But either way, you know, they said that and kudos to them for saying that with their full chest. But Biden did not take kindly to it. And his team put out a fundraising email referencing them calling calling them self-important podcasters, and they went on to refer to people concerned about Biden's chances as the bedwetting brigade and said that he's not dropping out, period. They also said this talk of Biden dropping out helps Trump, except the opposite is true because he is quite literally losing to Donald Trump, according to most polls. But that's all part of the gaslighting, which brings us to their next strategy. They're going to do a massive PR campaign, according to Axios, to try to get us to uh, stop talking about this. So the strategy here is to one, dismiss bedwetting, i.e. downplay his cognitive capabilities and chalk it up to a single bad debate. I mean, this has been an issue before the debate that just kind of like was the worst example, but nonetheless, there's number two, they're gonna cherry pick polls that make them look better. Number three, they're gonna fear monger about how an open or contested convention would help Trump. Four, limit dissent by drowning out the naysayers. Five, ease concerns with Democrats running down ballot races that are worried that his popularity could actually hurt their races. Number six, get donors to talk to other donors who are concerned. Number seven, prove he's viable somehow. I mean, maybe by giving him Adderall. If not, they should. Uh, and eight, try to create the illusion of competence by curating media appearances. Now, this is all just a strategy to ease concerns, but if it fails and the so-called bedwetters are still worried about whether or not he could lose to Trump, well, the final thing, as Bloomberg reports, is the DNC might just move up the official nomination of Biden to totally shut down talks of replacing him because, you know, once that happens, it's a done deal. In other words, if you're worried about Biden losing to Trump, shut the fuck up and accept your fate. And if you don't roll with someone who is demonstrably mentally unfit and losing in nearly every single poll, congratulations, you're the one helping Trump, not them. Listen, when we talked about this on The Leftist Mafia, we warned everyone that Biden was not going to be replaced because that's just not something that's going to happen. Democrats and Biden won't allow it, even though it's the logical thing to do. Giving up that much power again is something a politician would never do. So we're stuck with him. And basically, we have to cross our fingers that things change between now and November, and he somehow ekes out a victory. Best case scenario is we get four more years with this 81-year-old in cognitive decline. It's just democracy rests on, uh, on that. It's, it's such a bleak situation, right? So I'm expecting the worst, hoping for the best. But it's not the best strategy when it comes to democracy, right? But... What are you going to do? The elites have told us to accept this. And if we don't, then we're helping Donald Trump.